famous hangout, the place where Lawrence High plots the downfall of every other school. This is it. Think you dare to come in? I don't know. I am from Westport High, you know. I'll tell them you came from Mars. Her name, Jim, her name. Down, boy. My cousin. Sally Barber? Tom Morgan. Your cousin? Oh, this is too good to be true. My cousin, and I haven't seen her for a long time, so... Go away. Let us rattle the family skeletons in peace. Oh, Jim, if I had a cousin, I'd want her to meet interesting people. If you had a cousin like this, you'd do just what I'm doing. You'd protect her. So goodbye. All right, all right. Spoil the sport. This is a nice place, Jimmy. Even the wolves are nice. Why the armband? Oh, they're from the high school service club. Been out ringing doorbells. We're trying to boost United Fund over the top. I got everyone in my block signed up early this afternoon. You spent your Saturday working for the United Fund. If it were anyone but you kids from Lawrence, I wouldn't believe it. That's pretty wonderful, you know it. Well, actually, we had a lot of fun doing it. I guess the town needs United Fund on it. You know, you've really got it here at Lawrence. We've really got what? Maybe you'll think I'm, I'm kind of corny, but... Well, you've really got the right kind of school spirit. Golly, I wish the kids at Westport had a small idea of some of the things Lawrence has done. What's wrong with Westport? You've got school spirit. I can remember how you all came down here for the football game. Man, I never saw so much. Spirit? Sure. We've got a sort of school spirit. But here it's different. Your school spirit seems to be working at everything you do. It doesn't make any difference if it's sports or debate for competition for a scholarship. We know that Lawrence High is always going to be the hardest to beat. And every student body in the state feels the same way. You're not a big school. That can't be the reason you're always on top. So why are you? Well, gosh, it, it's hard to say. But if you ask me, I'd say Bob Corby had a lot to do with it. Bob Corby? I don't remember Bob Corbin. Sure you do. He was president of the senior class in all state the year we were freshmen. Oh, that Bob Corby. But he's been... Yes. He's been gone from Lawrence High a long time. But he left his mark. You know, I can remember a little bit of what it was like before his time. We had then what everybody thinks of as school spirit. A pep club cheerleaders, and plenty of noise. Whenever we won, we really cut loose. Snake dances, snarling up traffic, and racing up and down streets, blaring car horns, and yelling. It's certain the townspeople didn't get much sleep, and it's a wonder somebody didn't get killed. Sometimes noise wasn't enough. Sometimes it was kid stuff, such as painting the school initials in places where they had no business to be. If we'd had any sense, we'd have known all this carrying on was a discredit to the school. And then let's see. Yes, it was still my freshman year. We had a pep assembly. It wasn't an unusual assembly. Some band music and some yells, the members of the team talking to the student body. But, well, I remember what Bob Corby said when it was his turn. And now we'll have a few words from our team captain, Bob Corby. I'm not much of a speaker, so I guess about all I can do is tell you what I think and how the boys on the team feel about some things. The first thing I think is, if we took a vote right here and now, well, it'd probably be unanimous in favor of the basketball team not making speeches in assembly. But no kidding. But no kidding. You probably don't realize it, and I don't know just how to say it. But all of you out there 
mean more to the basketball team than any one of us who play on it. We spend a lot of time practicing and a lot of time learning the plays. And sometimes, well, we get to thinking we're pretty good. But when the day of the game rolls around, well, our insides get shaky. And we begin to wonder if we're really going to be any competition for the other team. If it weren't for all of you, and the way you feel about Lawrence High School, we'd be just another basketball team. You can feel that spirit right now, right here in this assembly. We're all for Lawrence. We're all for the team. We want to try to do well and try to win everything that the school does. And with that kind of spirit, I don't see how we can lose. Well, that threw it right into our laps. Bob Corby was a hero to every kid in school. And if he said the whole student body was a part of the team, why, well, we weren't going to let Bob Corby down. Those were the weeks when school spirit began to mean more than just norms. If an opposing team member was shooting a free throw, we all kept quiet to give him a chance to make it good. When Bob fouled out in the last minutes with the score tied, we didn't jeer the referee. We concentrated on supporting the players who were still in. That's what Bob was doing. We all had a new idea of good sportsmanship that all of us wanted to live up to. And it was heading us straight toward the championship. Lawrence High was rated one of the top teams in the state. And that's when it happened. Right in the middle of the season, halfway to the championship, Bob got sick, really sick. He was the spark plug of the team. With him gone, we didn't know whether the team would fold or not. What really happened was that it worked just the opposite way. People got to thinking about Bob in the hospital, and everybody became more determined than ever to carry on with what Bob had started. The coach never said, uh, we've got to win this one for old Bob. He was too smart for that. He knew that's what we were all thinking anyway. Well, there was no foolishness at all after that. Everyone got behind the team in the way that it counted, not calling attention to ourselves, but letting them know we were for them. And you know, it was a thing that carried over into every classroom. Because when you get right down to it, a classroom is a kind of team too. Students and teachers working together to accomplish something. If you look at it that way, you realize that there isn't anybody more on your side than the teacher is, whatever class you're in. The more we got behind them, the more we realized that Lawrence had as good a faculty as any school. They were teaching a full day's schedule and then taking on other jobs for the good of the school. Jobs like helping plan constructive assemblies and working with intramural sports and, and all sorts of other things. And we didn't want just the teachers doing things for the good of the school. We wanted to do them ourselves. Enrollments and debate and dramatics and science clubs jumped way up. Before long, we were as proud of our scholarship and extracurricular ratings as we were of our other victories. One student won a National Merit Scholarship that year, and everyone in school felt a personal pride in his accomplishment. When visitors from other schools dropped into Lawrence, well, I guess they could see that the building wasn't the newest or the biggest in the state, but that didn't matter. We knew any school would probably trade their shiny new buildings for what we had the reputation of being the best school in the state. Boy, I'll never forget the championship game that year. The cheerleaders had knocked themselves out on new yells and routines, and the new stuff sparked the whole cheering section. There wasn't an empty seat in the house. The whole student body turned out, even though the sports writers favored Washington High to beat us by at least eight points. After all, we didn't have Corby. That's what they thought. You should have seen them. Every man on the team was an inspired ball player. He had to be. Washington High didn't stand a chance.
I was on the student council that year, and I was one of those who went along when we took Bob Corby the championship trophy we had won. Well, Bob, here it is. We did it. Yeah? You did it. Gosh, you guys were great in the tournament. I'll never forget how you came from behind and walloped him. I could feel it just lying here listening on the radio. I knew just how the team felt with the school behind you every minute. Wish I could have been playing with you, but I guess you just have to take things as they come your way. Anyway, I'm glad I was on the team. I'm just as proud of this trophy as if I'd helped you win it. Thanks, fellas. Well, I guess you remember what happened. There are times when all the spirit in the world doesn't help. Sometimes you got to lose. It was hard to realize that Bob was gone. But in the end, he'd shown us something else. He'd shown that you can lose like a champion, too. I think it's wonderful the way you feel about him, Jimmy. But I think you're all wrong. Wrong? Why, it happened just the way I well, told I'm not you. saying that the order of events isn't true. I'm just saying that you're wrong to give Bob Corby all of the credit. But it was Bob. I know it was Bob. All those things he said... Somebody it... says almost the very same thing at every pep assembly without making that much difference. Why every school has one thing or one person to be proud of, the way you're proud of Bob Corby. But how many of them carry it any further? They would have, if they'd known Bob. There are kids at Lawrence now who never knew Bob Corby. Oh, can't you see? The spirit was there all the time. It wasn't all his doing that brought it out. You're missing the point. No, I'm not. I'm closer to it than you are. If what you have at Lawrence depended on Bob Corby, it would have died when he did. But it hasn't. It had to be all of you. Well, how can you argue with a woman? But I did argue with her. I argued with her for hours. But you know, since then I've been wondering more and more. Is Sally right? Was Bob Corby really less important than I thought to Lawrence High? Or was it Lawrence High that made Bob Corby important? Can any school build our kind of school spirit if it looks around to see all the things it has to be proud of and then supports them? win, lose, or draw? I don't know. What do you think?